poor households have the ability to, and do, save. But banks are not often a good option. Even when they are accessible, they often aren't welcoming to poor clients and don't offer useful and appropriate savings products to the poor. But saving at home may be impossible as well. One way poor households get around these challenges is the savings group. Savings groups have a long history in many parts of the world and are an effective way of encouraging saving among the poor who do not have access to a formal account. Mental accounting, salience, limited access, public commitment, and social norming are all mechanisms that help the group model to work. But is there a way to incorporate these elements outside of groups and into savings products in general? Even just having a box with a lock and a key can be an effective way to save, as researchers discovered in Kenya. The lockbox may act as a mental reminder that the money inside is committed to a future use. A study from India matched a saver with another person from the village tacked as a savings monitor. These monitors replicated the social norming and public commitment aspect of a saving group and encouraged higher savings without high administrative costs. Studies in Chile, Bolivia, Peru, and the Philippines found that those who received text message reminders to save had more savings than those who did not receive reminders. As mobile money and other technologies develop, there is great potential for more innovative savings products that can offer features shown to help build savings at low cost. There's still a lot we don't know about the hows and whys of savings behavior and product design, but research on savings groups is informing the design of products that can better meet the savings needs of the poor.